Hey everyone, Kyle once again, and welcome back to another mo uh, movie review, back to like another revisit review, because I wanted to look back on this film again, because I've enjoyed this a lot uh, growing up when I was a kid, and um, I really enjoyed this a lot, and uh, you can check back out my original review of this, so I won't go fully detail it since I already did in that one, so in my original review of it. And you know, I've already, and you already seen all, uh, some of my reviews in a while back, and you know, I did have the big poster right on this wall here, when I was facing the other way. Um, but it's already been 20 years since this came out in the year two in the year 2000, and uh, it's been already been 20 years. And it was this film was a successful film that came out during the summer, and I enjoyed it. So, so me review uh, looking back on this film again. This is my re uh, 20 an anniversary revisit review of of Disney's Dinosaur. I still enjoy this film, and uh, I thought people say, but you say that the effects may be outdated, but at what point I can see that, but I still think it's I still think on a on a, techn on a, techn a technical level I still think it's pretty I think it's still pretty good on a technical level still because I think the effects were still pretty good and good mixture of live action and animation and so with Disney's Dinosaur it came out in the year two thousand the summer of year two thousand. Um, it was the most. It was the most expensive movie that came out in the year two thousand. A budget of one hundred twenty-seven point five million. Uh, domestically made over one hundred thirty-seven million. One hundred thirty-seven. I think, I think it was. Yeah. And then worldwide, close to three hundred. Close to three hundred fifty million worldwide. So, and it became the fifth highest grossing film of the year two thousand. Um, it does get some positive reviews. It does have a sixty-four percent of Rotten Tomatoes, and it has. thing has a. a say a six point five nine DB. Uh, and even um, uh, uh, say uh, um, Roger Ebert to the movies. He get um, you know, you know Roger Ebert. You know, may rest in peace. You know, well, of course, I surprisingly a uh, few reviews I did previously. He surprisingly he enjoyed the films that I liked. <laughs> but yeah, but Roger Ebert even gave this film three out of four stars, saying the film's amazing visuals, but he criticized and but he criticized the decision of making the dinosaurs talk, and it felt like it canceled. Out the effort to make the film so realistic, and he also wrote the enormous effort to have been spent on making these dinosaurs seem real, and then even greater effort is spent on undermi undermining the illusion. So yeah, yeah. At one point, yeah, I can see where he is because you know trying to make these films realistic on a real on a live action background and all that, and making them talk though maybe seem like it took took probably took him out of it though, but still. I never, I never, I never minded. Even back then, when I first saw, I never minded them talking anyway. So, but I ne that never bothered me. It's like same thing with Lemon for a time making dinosaurs, but that's animation though. But um, I still enjoyed Dinosaur, and and for the voice cast, I still thought I thought still did a solid job because you have um you have DB Sweeney as your as Aladar, um Alfrey w w Woodard Woodard. Who's you know from I mostly remember from Star Trek: First Contact as Lily, but she's been in other movies as well and TV stuff too. Uh, Ossie Davis as Yar, um, Max Casella uh, Casella Zini, Hayden Panettiere uh, who's been in other movies as well from um, oh well I know she was in she voiced in A Bug's Life but uh, she's been in other movies like. Up, upward, and also, um, it was a TV show, it was a TV show Nashville, I think it was, but, um, but she's been in many movies as well, and I remember Scream 4, but that was bad, though, but she's been in movies in and out before between those years, I forget, though, but, uh, but I know I've seen her in, the, in those other films. Yeah, Samuel, Samuel Lee Wright as Cron, Juliana, uh, Margo, Juliana Margulies, who I just reviewed her previously in Snakes on Plane, she, um, which she, that she was, she, uh, she was in. Snakes out playing. Like I said, she was also in Ghost. She was in Ghost Ship, which I was not a fan of, though. But uh, she was in that, though. But yeah, but, but, yeah. I just re I just reviewed um, Snakes on a Plane, and not a long, not that long ago, and I just <laughs> forgot that she voiced um, as uh, Nira, who was um, the sister of, of Kron. And it was, is it? Uh, and also was it a? Uh, yeah, Sam, Sam, Samuel E. Wright, which who played Kron, he's a voice of Sebastian from The Little Mermaid. Yeah, you know, under the sea. 
Yeah, so he, yeah, he voices Kron. So yeah, so yeah, he voices uh, Sebastian, Little Mermaid, and he voices Kron in this. <laughs> and you have uh, Julia, Julia Marlies and um, Joan. Jo uh, jo uh, jo I always say uh, Joanne, but it's Joan. Joan uh, pa uh, Paul Wright, who voiced mostly for playing Mrs. Wilson from Dennis the Menace, and then um, uh, Nanny in the live action of a uh, '96 of 101 Dalmatians. You know, police help! Police! <laughs> always, I always she says police help! Police! <laughs> but I, I Joan, I like jo uh, Joan Paul Wright, and um, she even had a little minor role uh, cameo in the uh, last action hero as a teacher. <laughs> Um, and they had Dollar Reese as uh, Emma. Uh, so, but Dinosaur is the voice cast that was all of all so solid, and the visuals once again I thought was very well done. You know, mixture with they shot on actual like the the like the app the live action locations. You know, the locations they shot were actually live action. They mixed it with the CGI dinosaurs. I thought it was really. A uh, technical part back then I thought was pretty impressive, you know, using the CGI animation with live action um, backgrounds that they shot. So yeah, and which I think oh, they later on they did that they did that on one thumb, which I got I got fully review that film, uh, Walking with Dinosaurs in 3D, which I think they did the same thing as well. I got fully review because I know back years back why I, I did a brief review because I saw that back. I just saw that in the theater, so I had to do a full-on review on that film. But I think they did the same thing with live-action backgrounds of the CGI dinosaurs and walking with dinosaurs. So, I think so. But um, but as long as we're getting back to the, the film here, uh, as the story goes, like, once again, you have, as I said before, um, we have our, our lead character Aladar, who who when he wasn't when he was an egg, he got separated from his nest, and he was in the ocean. He traveled all the way to this. This island, where this island of lemurs, he's the only dinosaur on his island, where he's raised by this le the lemur family. You know, it's a a, 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 a pipe was a pilo again, voiced by Alfred Woodward, um, Yar by the voice of Ossie Davis and his other lemur and his other lemur family. Then they see a meteor, sh I mean, then a meteor shark comes and destroys their home, so they force to swim across the ocean until they hit, they hit back on land. Yeah. I forgot to mention, yeah, is Aladar. He's an iguan. He's an iguanodon, a iguanodon. But mostly, mostly, uh, the the distinct figure on the feature on the uh, the characteristic feature is um, their thumb is actually used as as a spike. That's like the the most uh, ironic feature of of the species of dinosaur iguanodon is their thumb is actually a spike. Really enough, so that's what Aladar is. And as they're walking along, they come across this big herd which. This big herd, which they're um, looking for a new a new place to live, new land, because because the meteor wiped everything, all green life out, led by uh, Kron, voiced by Samuel E. Wright, who is <laughs> he's a, basically he's a dickhead basically, and uh, his his sister N Nia, uh, Nira Nira sorry, voiced by Julia Monolies, and he has a he has a lieutenant uh, Kron played by a uh, brute Bruton. Bruton, voiced by Peter uh, Sergusa. So they're searching for they're searching for a whole new place to live. They said that was not impacted by the meteors. So like the has been rude to him, and he befriends this uh, this elderly Ceracosaurus, um, Professor Della Reese, and then uh, Baleen. Voiced by Joan Paul, Paul Wright, who is the a brachiosaurus, who's the last of her kind. And one to one point where, um, like they get to this one dry place to where there's this supposed to have water, but it's dried up though. But um, Bailey's, you know, her heavy weight, you know, she every time she steps, there's water underneath it, so they dig it up. Of course, Crom being the jerk off as he is, he goes and shoves everyone out of the way, taking all the water for himself. And then while all, all this is going on, they're being tailed by two Carnotaurs. Which they're kind of like, sort of, there's like a much more smaller version of a T-Rex. Which they, but they only have like two horns each side though, but Carnotaurs. And as I mentioned before, um, I have not, you have not seen a Carnotaur in another movie and since until one has appeared in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. You know, when they're escaping, when they're escaping from the island, you know, like when they're on that, um, 
pot and uh, that those those mobile pods. One just pops up when um, when the Rexy, the T Rex in the first movie, takes it out and there's just starts roaring. So yeah, I haven't seen it. It's like oh cool, they put a Carnotaur in here. I haven't sat, and I said before I haven't seen one since the start in Disney's Dinosaur. <laughs> of course, one popped up, one popped to the end and ate down that character Mills along with the T Rex. Tore him in half. So yeah, okay, that was cool. They did put that in Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom. <laughs> but yeah, there. But there's two of them. One, they're they're on their they're on their trail, seeking from you know food to eat. Them. <laughs> and Br uh, Bruton, he gets injured and letting red them the cars right to them. But um, as the crew gets ahead, Aldar can't leave the two elder dinosaurs behind because they're so slow. And Bruton, he gets left behind as well. And they find the cave, and he has a like, sort of, like, redeems himself by protecting the others from the Chronotaurs, but, um, there's a cave-in, and he dies, he dies of that. And eventually, one of the things, you know, they break through this wall of rubble, and they meet, they go, they, they find, they find the, the place they've been searching for. But there's another way, but it's blocked, and that's where the other group is on the other side. And then, Kron, being the jackass that he is, he's forcing, he wants everybody to go up there, climb wherever it is, even though regardless of danger... Or are they going to be injured? Who cares? Aldar tells everyone to stay behind while he goes and gets them. Challenge, like, fight, fights Kron, you know, for the leader. But then... Then the one Carnotaur, because the, uh, the, the, the first one died in that rock slide. But the second one... Um, approaches them, but Aldar... Fends, it starts fending it off by, by you know screaming at it or, or roaring at it, and all the other dinosaurs do the same thing. But then the, it sees Kron being the stupid, being the stupid idiot as he is, starts climbing up that that wall by himself and goes after him. But eventually, he ends up getting himself killed along with that Carnotaur, though. So, and then eventually, and then uh, they go, they make it back to the the, the peace land and. Uh, Aladar and uh, Nira, you know, they, they have the kids and babies of their own, and, um, although I, I, I had to say, though, um, the one, I thought the nitpick I have is that, um, you didn't need, you didn't need, like, in the, it happened in the beginning of the movie where when the lemurs, uh, get Aladar when he, when he hatched out the egg, and then when Yar picks him up, you know, a baby Aladar pisses on him, and it does the same, it does the same thing here where, where, Yar pits up his, his like his like you say his uh, you can say his grandkids you can say his grandkid um picks it up and then it also pisses on him as well. He didn't he didn't need that. He should cut. You could have not put that in there. We don't to see a, a a first time or a second time baby dinosaur pissing on a a lemur. You didn't need to put that in there. And then um and then um uh, Zini um. Was a Max Casella. Uh, he um, there are, finds out there are other more lemurs of other kind. He's like, hey, look, new neighbors. <laughs> and then they all live happily ever after. So yeah, I still enjoy dinosaur. Twenty years later, it's still uh, I still enjoy Disney's dinosaur. I know there, are, I know people have said that they've enjoyed this film as well. So I'm not, obviously I'm not alone in this. I thought so, I would say it's, I would say I would put this as a classic. I would say. Because on, on a tech, because back then, it probably is not probably is not precedent today. People would say, but um, back then, I would say I would still respect it on a technical level because hey, CGI dinosaurs would shoot on actual locations, not a CGI background, whatever. Actually, shot on. Uh, they should. The, you know, the thing is, they should for the Lion King 2019 remake. They should have done the same thing with that. And that's what pisses me off about that. They should. It's it's, it's an animated anime. No, it's not. It's live action. If it, I I already I already complained about that before, but on the subject before, but yeah, they should have done it on actual locations. Now make it entire CGI, realistic CGI. And this one was this one kicks this one kicks the shit out of the 2019 Lion King remake. Shoot on actual locations like this film did, or I think even Walking with Dinosaurs 3D did that as well. And that was that was in 2013. Sheesh. So that's why I respect that they do. They did shoot, shoot on actual locations, and they just add the CGI dinosaurs in there. So that's why I respect it on a on a technical level. 
But yeah, I thought it was also well paced as well. The pacing for was about 82 minutes. So it's a short movie. So, without any credits, like, just about 70-some 70, 70 minutes. Minutes. Um... And uh, this is all. This has a lot of features. This is a two-disc special edition. Has a lot of features on here. Well, I don't want to look up, like scroll this whole entire. Like, but if you look at this for both disc one and disc two, there's a lot of features. But the voice cast, I thought I did that. Uh, they did a good job. Such as uh, DB Sweeney as Aladar, um, especially uh, Alfred Woodward as Pilo, and then Ozzy Davis as Yar. There's the same Samuel Lee Wright as Cron, Julia Margulies. But I thought she had a better dub she did in Ghost Ship. Like I said, I keep nipping on Ghost Ship, but I was not a fan of I know my friend Peter Freak Out 10, he is a fan of He He likes Ghost Ship, though, but um, me personally, I didn't, though. But hey, it's all opinions. The door swings both ways. That's why I have difference in opinions. He respects my opinion. That's still cool, and um, I respect his opinion. But yeah, Julia Margulies, like I said, I, I, liked her in, I liked her in Snakes on a Plane. I thought she did a good job of voicing here. <laughs> and Samuel Lee Wright and uh, his first Kron, you know, going from, from Sebastian <laughs> playing this character in here as Kron. Uh, jo Joan, uh, Joan Plowright, I, I enjoy her as an actress too. So she's such a sense from Dennis the Menace and uh, 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> but so the voice cast was very solid, I would say. And. Yeah, so 20 years later, I still enjoy the film. And, um. I got for, uh, for the, I forgot to mention the score by James Newton Howard. Like I got mentioned the score. I thought it was a pretty, a very decent score by James James Newton Howard, which I remember that he did score for, for for the Fugitive, Space Jam, um, and among other among other movies. But those, those are the two scores I remember from James Newton Howard from from the Fugitive and Space Jam. But he did a good job with his score in here. Yeah. Yeah, Disney's Dinosaur, the most technologically advanced film ever. Well, not ever, because no film's the best. Takes her on an action-packed journey back 65 million years. <laughs> yeah, a unique blend of spectacular live-action photography and outstanding computer-generated Disney animation. Well, yeah, it's, it's stunning, stunning backgrounds, yeah. So yeah, like, yeah the, good, see, the live-action backgrounds, yeah, it was cool that he did that. Mixed with the CGI. Yeah, but yeah, I, I still enjoy Disney Dinosaur. Disney Dinosaur. But you can check out my original review if you want to. I just know there's are fans of this film as well. So am I. So yeah. Still enjoy this film. 20 years later. Anniversary. 2020th anniversary. It's still an enjoyable film. I'm so glad I enjoyed, enjoyed it back then. As I did back in 2000. So I remember back in 2000. I remember, that there were, I remember the advertising for this film. The commercials as well. Yeah, it's a lot to say, but still enjoy D Dizzy's Dinosaurs. Dinosaur, not no S. Dinosaur. But thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next uh, movie review, and I'll give give this and give this a thumbs up. Worth, it's definitely worth watching, and we'll see you later.